myself yam gunakar assistant professor of zoology today let us learn a new thing today let us discuss water vascular system which is also called umbilical system in asterias asterias is a scientific name of sea star or starfish it belongs to the phylum echinodermata water vascular system in asterias not only in asterias but in all echinoderms it is a peculiar system so it can be treated as a diagnostic feature of echinoderms also and this system is derived from sea loam all through the system the water sea water is enter into the water vascular system and it circulates it is also called umbilical system and this system is mainly useful for locomotion and food capturing and to some extent it also helps in respiration and you can see the t- the system water vascular system in asterias it appears like this as this and shown in the figure and it in every arm it spreads of the starfish it spreads uh, like the figure it is considered as a, as one of the diagnostic features of the phylum echinodermata because this system is found only in echinodermata and the system has many canals and all the canals of the system are filled with water and amoeboid corpuscles amoebocytes and the canals are lined internally by ciliated epithelium and they are they possess muscular walls also so let us have a look at the various organs that are found in the water vascular system now various organs that are found in the water vascular system that helps in the functioning of the water vascular system or umbilical system are as follows madreporite the first and main organ that comes under the water vascular system is the madreporite then ampulla stone canal also called madreporic canal you can see the stone canal here uh, okay madreporite is this one a rounded structure you can see in this figure also rounded structure these are the madreporite and ampulla a small portion just below the madreporite is the ampulla this is the ampulla the where and uh, stone canal stone canal which connects the madrepor madreporite to the main body which is the canal like structure which is having a s shaped structure that is called stone canal or madreporic canal and ring canal ring canal because in the it forms a canal that is in the form of a ring now you can see it is in the form of a pentamerous ring so that is ring canal or ring umbilical vessel tidemans bodies now you can see in this figure tidemans bodies are present this small uh, black structures and uh, radial canals the radial canals the from from ring canal in each arm this ring ring uh, radial canals pass into each arm then from the radial canal lateral canal arises in each arm lateral canal arises and at the end of the lateral canals main organs of the water vascular system that are tube feet are present these uh, you can see small budding like bud like structures these are the bud like structures they are called tube feet now first of all let us start with the madreporite madreporite as i said just now is a circular filtering plate this you can see the filter plate it is a filter plate or sieve plate it filters the sea water the sea water enters through the madreporite and this madreporite is located in one of the inter radii on the aboral side of the central disc this you can see the central disc and aboral side means the side on which anus is present oral side where mouth is present opposite side aboral side where anus is present so the madreporite is present on the aboral side and if we see the surface of the madreporite it bears many wavy grooves numerous wavy grooves you can see in this figure wavy grooves they are radiating from the center and at the bottom wavy grooves are furrows and in the furrows are at the bottom of the furrows they have minute pores minute pores about the number of pores may be up to 250 250 about 250 and these pores they lead to pore canals now you can see in this figure how the pores are leading to uh, uh, red colored structures this uh, red they are not in red color but uh, only for convenience i have given the red color these pore canals the pores lead to pore canals and 
in some pore canals they unite to form the collecting canals now here it green color structures you can see collecting canals and these can collecting canals open into a small sac below the madreporite that is called ampulla this uh, the blue color structure that is ampulla and which is present beneath the madreporite immediately beneath the madreporite you can see beneath the madreporite only you can see this ampulla now ampulla opens into the next part that is called stone canal stone canal and madreporite leads into a s shaped madreporite through the ampulla leads into a s shaped stone canal this is now you can see the s shape almost s shape and this s canal s shaped stone canal extends downward to the oral end as we have just discussed that this madreporite is present towards the aboral end now it takes a course of s shape s shape and then go to the oral side oral end then its wall is supported by this the canal the stone canal the wall of the stone canal is supported by calcareous ring rings hence its name as stone canal it is internally lined by ciliated cells and these cilia are responsible for the movement of water and now you can see when asterias is young the stone canal has nothing in their lumen but as it grows as the asterias grows the stone canal will get a ridge in the center will get a ridge in the center and it gets this uh, the lumen look like this that means in the center it has a ridge and it has this ridge has two circular lamellae which is going outside right now so actually in the a uh, young stage the lumen has nothing no ridges at all it will be rounding it will be looking as a round structure but as the asterias grows a ridge appears in the center which takes and uh, which uh, with the two spiral lamellae are present on on oral end it opens into the ring canal this stone canal as i said just now it runs it goes to the towards the uh, oral end and it end, uh, opens into the ring canal which is also called ring umbilical vessel now coming to the ring ring canal or ring umbilical vessel uh, it is a actually it is wide pentagonal vessel now you can see here in this figure now i made a uh, you know square so you can see the yellow colored structure this ring canal uh, which has uh, a pentagonal shape and uh, the angles of the pentagon lie in radial po po position see this is the radial radial means where the arms are present where the arms are present and the inter radius means where the in between the two arms there is a inter radius position so uh, as these radial canals are lying in the radial position the uh, these uh, uh, this ring canal is also called radial umbilical vessel through the extension of the canals it enters into the arms also now on its inner side each inner radius inter radius on its inner side each inter radius now you can see you can have a look at it here on on the inner side of the in, uh, you know the uh, pentagonal ring you can see black spot like structures these black spot like structures are called tide men's bodies or racemose glands the inter radius containing see see in in uh, in the in the inter radius where stone canal is present where the stone canal is present here in this inter radius so here actually each inter radius possess two tideman bodies or two racemose glands but except the inter radius to, uh, on which stone canal is present so the inter radius on which stone canal is present is having only one tideman body that means totally nine tideman's bodies are present and it has got Uh, it's named tideman body because of the uh, because of the scientist who discovered them now tideman's bodies what are these tideman's bodies as i said already they are nine in number each radius has two tideman's bodies but the inter radius which has you know stone canal it, it is having only one tideman body the other other inter radius has two each so 1 2 3 and 4 4 into 2 8 plus this 1 9 uh, tideman's bodies or pessimose glands are present 
and they are attached to the inner side of the ring canal in the interradius position and the cavity of the Tidman's body is divided into many chambers that open into the ring canal. They produce, they are uh, supposed to produce phagocytic coelomocytes or amoebocytes. That means they are supposed to be uh, lymphatic organs which are responsible for the production of phagocytic coelomocytes, otherwise called as amoebocytes. They wander in the water uh, in the water canal system. And uh, now you can see, uh, you can have a look at the below figure here uh, where on the outer margins of the uh, pentaradius ring or ring canal you can see small you know vesicular structures which are called polyan vesicles and these polyan vesicles are polyan vesicles are they, they, they are supposed to store water and help in regulating pressure in the water water vascular system but Asteria doesn't possess any polyan vesicles they are polyan vesicles are present in other uh, you know starfishes which belong to the other species but as far as asterias is concerned polyan vesicles are completely absent so these polyan vesicles help in regulating the water pressure in the water water vascular system uh, and the tidemans bodies uh, these are these are supposed to produce phagocytic coelomocytes now coming to the next uh, organ in the water vascular system which are called radial canals. These radial uh, which are also called radial umbilical vessels. They are 5 in number. Now you can see in this figure I have made a square over here. What is that? That is the radial canal. So how many radial canals are present? Totally 5 radial canals are present. Each one extending from the central disc to the end of the terminal portion of the arm. Uh, they they come out from the ring umbilical vessel or ring canal. They as I said just now arise from outer surface of the ring canal. Now you can see here arise from outer surface of the ring canal. They extend through the arms above the umbilical grooves. Umbilical grooves are present in the each arm and above the umbilical grooves these uh, ring canal or uh, these uh, radial canals they extend up to the end of the end of the arm or that is up to the lumen of the terminal tentacles. So the terminal tentacles are present at the end of the each arm of the starfish. So each radial canal gives on either side a series of lateral canals or podial canals. Now you can see on each you know radial canal you can see a small uh, you know like this on either side they give these are called lateral canals or podial canals. Now next step next topic is lateral canal. Next organs are lateral canals of the water vascular system. So these lateral canals, now you can see the lateral canals here, lateral canal, this is the ring, uh, this is the uh, radial canal, okay, these are the radial canals, on, e, on, on radial canals, there are many lateral canals are present. So these lateral canals are present on either side of the radial canals along its entire length, they extend up to the end of the, uh, you know, arm. And there are, these lateral canals are present in two series and one is long and one is short and these long and short lateral canals are arranged in an alternate position. They open into the, they, at the end of the lateral canals, there are present a tube-like structure or a sac-like structure. That sac-like structure is called tube feet. That means every la lateral canal opens at, the, at their end into the tube feet. And at the entry of uh, the lateral canal into the tube feet, there present a valve. A valve is present and this because of this valve the opening of the podial canal into the tube feet or lateral canal into the tube feet the uh, it prevents the valve is useful for preventing the backward flow of the water from the tube feet now coming to the main organs of the water vascular system which are otherwise called as tube feet as i said just now there are two double rows in the umbilical groove of each arm they are attached to lateral canals they are attached to lateral. each two feet you can see here each two feet is attached to the at the end of the lateral canal and uh, it has uh, uh, it is a actually it is a closed sac like structure it is a hollow structure closed sac like structure each tube feet consists of an ampulla a podium and a sucker see you can you can see here uh, it it has a it's, it has an ampulla a round structure and a podium 
a podium means a, an elongated structure and then at the end of the, this podium a sucker is present a sucker is present and if you see ampulla ampulla which lies within the arm and it projects into the coelom through a gap called ambulacral pore now you can see here there is a gap called ambulacral pore here and uh, through the ambulacral pore, pore it projects out into the coelom and between the between this ambulacral pore lies between the two ambulacral ossicles now this is one ambulacral ossicle this is one ambulacral ossicle so from the two ambulacral ossicles the ambulacral pore is present through this pore this uh, you know uh, ampulla projects out into the coelom these two feet are considered as main organs of locomotion now you can see here the complete picture shows here the tube feet how they are arranged on the end of the lateral canals on two uh, alternately alternately they are arranged uh, each tube feet is possessing one ampulla one podium one sucker and this ampulla is different from the ampulla that was present below the madriporite now coming to the what is the function of the water vascular system actually how the physiology of the water what is the physiology of the water vascular system see the various parts of the water vascular system just now we have uh, seen various organs of the water vascular system or umbilical system they contain a muscular wall throughout the all water water canals all organs of the water vascular system they contain a muscular wall which is lined internally by ciliated epithelium and these cilia are responsible as i said already the cilia are responsible for continuous movement of the water and this tube feet they contain specially well developed muscular layer the whole system is filled with water and because of this the, it acts as a hydrostatic skeleton hydrostatic skeleton so which is necessary for all aquatic organisms not only aquatic organisms other organisms also this is hydrostatic skeleton uh, because of the presence of water and uh, it is adequately specialized with the help of these muscles and nervous system also muscles and nervous system you can see the nerves are also present here which is various nerves are present here uh, attached to the tube feet and through the uh, you know water enters through the pores of the madriporate before we have seen we have seen where, where the madriporate is present which is functioning as a sieve plate uh, and the, through the madriporate pores the water enters and the, as the water enters through the pores it circulates through the system by the beating of cilia and pass out through the end uh, at the at the end they pass out through the tube feet so the function of tube feet depends on the differences between the musculature of ampulla and other parts so ampulla consists of circular muscle fibers arranged which are arranged vertically and whereas podium consists of longitudinal muscle fibers so the when the tube feet protracts when the protraction of tube feet is brought about this protraction of the tube tube feet or contraction of the tube feet is brought about by the contraction of the circular muscles and withdrawal is done by contraction of longitudinal muscles that means when the circular muscles of the uh, ampulla they contract then tube feet also contract and when the contraction of longitudinal muscles that occur in the podium they contract then the ampulla relaxes so the uh, this contraction and relaxation of the uh, po the ampulla of the tube feet helps in movement of the water from the sac to the podium then from the podium to the outside through the sucker now this is the uh, functioning or uh, the physiology of water vascular system where tube feet are the main organs now uh, the, what are the what are the functions of the water vascular system uh, the main function of the water vascular system that means uh, tube feet which are considered as the main organs of the water vascular system is none other than locomotion and it also helps in various other functions also for example attachment adherence or attachment to the substratum capturing and handling of food 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 material then respiration and to some extent this tube feet are also functions our water vascular system also helps in 
there is tube feet helps in tactile organ there is respond they respond to touch touch receptors in some species these are the functions of the water vascular so main function of the water vascular system that is tube feet is nothing but locomotion and in addition it also helps in the capturing of the food the adherence or attachment to the substratum respiration and the response to touch that is tactile organs thank you for watching this channel